Hey, good afternoon. How's everybody? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Professor. Hey. How are you, Abraham? Or Philly? Good afternoon. Yeah, how are you, Yingyu? Thank you. Good afternoon, Professor. How are you? So we have like, uh, how many of these? Like, you know, 12 uh, here in the Collaborate. Actually, you know, 13 now, counting 13. Now, <clears throat> and uh, let me quickly check. Um, uh, in, the, uh, in the discussion board, there are 15. So definitely uh, we need two more people <clears throat> to join. Okay, so today um, we're moving on to the uh, second topic, but actually we are, t <laughs> I've been telling you this over and over. Collaborate session is not the, the main lecture. Collaborate session is not the, uh, the class, main part of the class. I've been telling you this is only the uh, reflect reflection of the uh, past classes, right? So this is not the main thing. The main lecture, main class um, is here in the uh, uh, course material. And as of today, actually, uh, you should, you must catch up with uh, topic three, you know, uh, uh, and these videos up to uh, up to these videos. Okay, and if you haven't caught up with that, um, you really must, you know, hurry up. You must rush it. Okay, you must rush it because there's no time. <clears throat> Think about it. By uh, today is what August third, and this must be covered until August fifth, which is this Thursday, and you have this much still left. You know, um, and everything must be exactly on uh, schedule. Otherwise, there's not uh, no way. And after this, then you know, um, and. Uh, probably pretty much, you know, topic three is the uh, uh, second most difficult uh, part, the second most difficult topic. Most difficult topic would be, you know, probably, you know, uh, topic seven. But again, we have, uh, we have everything, you know, uh, uh, earmarked or, you know, everything, you know, uh, uh, planned on our timeline so we have to uh, we have to make we have to meet that timeline we have to meet that schedule uh, so if you're we are just now going into topic tools so this is such a um, uh, If you think, you know, if you say later, oh, professor, you know, I, I didn't know, you know, I thought I, I was, you know, attending every, you know, collaborate session, blah, blah. Now that's a lame excuse, you know, if you, um, it's, it's a pathetic excuse because I've been telling you the class, this is not the class. Collaborate session is not the, uh, uh, the actual class, the actual class is going on. It's delivered by pre-recorded lecture, uh, and it is, you know, um, on schedule. It, it is it, it is delivered uh, every day by the you know pre-scheduled uh, timeline. So you must be you know up to that. Uh, you must be caught up with all of that. Uh, and we cannot, uh, I cannot reteach every, the point of this collaborative session is not to reach, you know, uh, reteach anything because um, it takes a lot of time. And, in, and 
Think about it. In the collaborate session, uh, there is a lot of wasted time because uh, your response is not instantaneous, and I'm I keep you know uh, I keep asking. Do you understand? Is there anyone uh, here? <laughs> Are you listening? Are you sleeping? And all that. If you if your response is instantaneous, then <laughs> there is at least you know uh, 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 we can minimize you know the loss of time. But there's a lot of you know uh, idle time you know lost. Uh, time lost due to uh, communication. So this is this cannot be the main class. You understand? Um, now, anyway, so as we are moving on to the new topic, and the new topic is you know um, uh, financial statements. So let me uh, share the screen. Now I think, uh, so you must download, you must have these files open in, in front of you. What file am I talking about? What file am I talking about? You might wonder, well, you should know. Um, Okay, the course. Oh, so you didn't, uh, I haven't been sharing. In other words, um, you must be the, the, the real lecture, the main lecture uh, is at uh, topic three. And these are the uh, videos you have to catch up <clears throat> as of today, right, by today. Because they, they're going to be gone later. And we're going to, uh, we are looking at, right? We're looking at, uh, we're already, you know, behind, you know, because what we are talking about in the collaborate session already passed. Look, they are all grayed out. They are all grayed out. You understand? All grayed out because they are all passed. Right. Um, so you must have watched them already. You should have watched them already. The last, you know, uh, when it was last available was July 31st, when, you know, these files were available on July 31st. So you should have watched them uh, by July 31st, right? July 31st and these were these are like by August. They were last available on August first, and then these one August two, right? But they are already, you know, no longer available. So if you have missed, then you will, you know, uh, and you shouldn't have missed any of these, you know. Again, collaborate session is not the um, uh, main class. Collaborate session is only uh, review and reflection. Okay, so uh, don't tell me later. You know, uh, you are missing a lot if you don't keep up with these. You know, assigned uh, videos, right? And and these are the files that you have to. Uh, download and use, they are still there. And I'm talking about, if you open up this file, right? Okay. Um, so, uh, we, uh, the, we are now moving on to financial statements because uh, the first topic was return on investment. And basically, we looked at return on investment from macro perspective, right? From macroeconomic perspective, 
what is you know uh, the bottom line of all return on investment and you know it is the uh, in the bottom line, the baseline of all return on investment is the bank interest rate, right? Which is, of course, you know, immaterial these days. Uh, but there were times when bank interest rate was Fed, fund, especially Fed funds rate, right? Of course, you know, uh, you uh, the Fed funds rate is still, you know, pretty much 0.25%. That's why you get meager 0.1% in... Um, <clears throat> by putting money in the bank. But there was a time when, you know, uh, Fed funds rate was even as high as, you know, like 15%. Can you even imagine 15%? Huh? You might say, wow, that, that must have been a heydays of banking. No, actually not. Why? Well, you might think, oh, 15% interest, wasn't it a good thing? Uh, well, good thing for the uh, uh, good thing for the lender. I mean, if you're putting your money in the bank, this is a, a bank interest rate, safe, right? No risk bank interest rate. Uh, I mean, if that was Fed funds rate, then uh, bank interest rate could have been something like you know 10%. Let's say if it was. Who can? That, that is that is outrageous. 15%. Um, bank interest rate is outrageous. But there, there was a time it was like that. That was, and it wasn't that long ago. Uh, well, maybe to you it was long ago, but to me, <laughs> well, 19, it was in 19, between 1981 and 84, 85, right? During those days, 1981 through 84, 85, that was the time when Fed funds rate, interest rates was as high as, you know, 15%. But then think about it. From if, if you are someone putting your money in the bank, this is a good news because this is a no risk, zero risk return on your money, right? But then if you are the borrower, if you're borrowing money from the bank, this is clearly a bad news, right? I was going to borrow at, you know, and I told you, if it is, you know, uh, Fed funds rate is 15%, then even the, uh, what would be the prime rate? What would be the prime rate? Huh? Does anyone remember? What is the uh, uh, prime rate? Prime rate is, uh, how is the prime rate determined? Does anyone remember? Hmm? There is nothing etched in stone, but conventionally, prime rate is no one. Okay, if you don't want, I mean, I'm giving you an opportunity to earn extra credit. You don't want extra credit, that's fine. Okay, nobody gets extra credit. But, you know, uh, it wasn't that long Prime ago. rates are, um, they're determined by individual banks. Uh, yeah, 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 because individual, uh, but then, you know, uh, there's a certain rule for that. By the Federal Reserve? Federal Reserve only sets the target rate for Fed funds rate. But, you know, in the lecture material that we use, you know, there's a, you know, It clearly says, you know, uh, this is how prime rate is determined. No one? Conventionally, so I don't, okay. Since nobody is, you know, uh, taking advantage of this opportunity, I'll just, conventionally, prime rate is about 3% above Fed funds rate. It's about 3, 3%. So Fed funds rate plus 3%. Right? There can be a slight difference between the banks, yeah. but the yeah. difference the the difference is who said yeah. But you know 
<laughs> you're too late, right? Think about it. You've never I gave me the answer. Right? What? Who I said what? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. You said, yes. I brought yes. back, you said yes, but, you know, that's too late. Right? You understand? I already, I already gave you the answer. I already said the answer. What's the point? I mean, you said yes, thank you for uh, affirming that. Uh, but, you know, if you gave me the answer uh, already, you know, um, you would have earned some extra point, right? Now, of course, you know, uh, because banks are all competitive, you know, and uh, for uh, they may, each individual banks would slightly, you know, um, it could be 3% or 3.25 uh, or 3. Point or uh, 3.1 or 3.15 or 2.95. But generally, it wouldn't be lower than the Fed funds rate because they have to make something more than the Fed funds rate just in case they have to borrow from the federal funds market, right? So during 1981 through 85 period, uh, when Fed funds rate was like as high as 15%, and the uh, uh, and then the prime rate was something like 18%. Think about it. Who would borrow at 18%? Who would borrow at 18%? That, that is punishing almost. It's a punitive, right? It's a punitive rate if you think about it. So then what is the intention? What is the intention? Why did they set prime rate such high? I mean, why did they set the uh, Fed, Fed funds rate at such a high rate? It's simply prohibitive, right? The intention is to prohibit borrowing. And why? Why would they prohibit borrowing? Why would they make it so prohibitive? There's only one reason. You remember, you know. Uh, avoid uh, inflation. Avoid what? Inflation. So, what, 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 what? In, did avoid you say what? Inflation. Avoid inflation. Inflation, not inflection, inflation. not inflection, okay. inflation. And who, who was that? Who was that? Ying Yu. Ying Yu, yes, Ying Yu. Thank you. So you got, oh, um, this is 0 0.5. This is worth 0 0.5. Yes, to avoid... Uh, inflation. There are, you know, what is the purpose of monetary policy? I mean, you know, Federal Reserve raising interest rate. Why? They want, if they raise, you remember, why do they raise interest rate? Because they want to cool off the economy. Right? They want to, uh, economy is overheating, so they want to cool off the economy. And why do they lower the interest rate? Uh, because they want to stimulate the economy, right? If the interest rate is lower, uh, borrowing, there will be more borrowing, right? Borrowing is encouraged. But if interest rate is high, borrowing is discouraged. And if borrowing is discouraged, then uh, the economy, money supply in the economy will go down. Economic activity will go down because there will be no expansion. This is um, too, too expensive to borrow to expand the capacity, right? Uh, so this is, uh, so that means, oh, then 1981, that means 1981 through 1984, five period. This was the uh, uh, period when economy was uh, depressed. Right, because prior to that, uh, late 1970s, 1970, 
seven, eight, nine, uh, uh, 1978, 9, and 1980. This was a time of inflation, accelerated inflation, accelerated inflation. And this period was called, you know, uh, uh, inflation was during this period was called stagflation. What that means is the economy is stagnating. Usually when there is inflation, right? Remember, economy must be uh, growing because inflation is a sign of, of course, moderate inflation, not, not high inflation, moderate inflation. What did I say moderate inf inflation is? Uh, Federal Reserve's, what is Federal Reserve's target inflation rate? What is the Federal Reserve's target inflation? We talked about this yesterday. 2%. 2%. And who said that? Mohammed. Okay, Mohammed. So uh, you're getting well, 0 0.25 for that. Yes. Um, uh, Federal Reserve's target inflation is 2%. That means, you know, uh, if inflation is about 2%, then that is stimulate. That is the result of the uh, uh, strong uh, growth in demand, right? Which means, you know, uh, it's it's inevitable result of a uh, strong economy, right? And currently, actually, you know, uh, during this pandemic, economy isn't that bad. It's uh, because nobody is, nobody is, uh, you know, uh, nobody's, nobody is starving. Nobody is, you know, because nobody is getting evicted just, you can't you don't have job i told you yesterday uh this stimulus pay stimulus check is so good a woman who used to have like a uh uh 20 something 26 23000 dollar a year job uh you know making 23000 dollar a year pre pandemic period actually is making 63, 60 something thousand dollars during the pandemic a year. Because without working, without working. So that means so much money is being pumped into the economy to keep the economy afloat. Nobody is, you know, and so spending, the consumer spending is, you know, keeping the economy afloat, right? Uh, and so currently the inflation is slightly above 2%, right? About 2.3, 2.5. Um, so this is still, you know, uh, not accelerated inflation. When inflation is accelerated, it will be, you know, uh, very high, like five, above five, you know, 5%, you know, um, that's called, you know, uh, accelerated inflation. And when inflation is accelerated, the economy is overheated. But the inflation, Accelerated inflation, overheated economy is a basically a uh, uh, defeating itself. In other words, think about it. When everything is uh, expensive, right, due to high inflation, then this is a deterrent. This is a deterrent to production because input cost, right, cost of input, cost of production uh, goes up. And if the cost of, uh, remember, growth rate, it's, the, it's basically the, uh, uh, the question of which one, which one prevails, which one uh, outweighs the other. If the growth rate is still greater than inflation, yes, it will keep going. If the growth rate is less than inflation, then that means, you know, all producers will find it to their um, uh, to their loss to produce more because the more you produce, right? Because of the higher input cost, right? Uh, uh, their profit margin goes down, and you might say, "Oh, then you know, uh, uh, shouldn't they raise price?" No, you cannot raise price on your own because Think about it, you are not the, unless you are a monopoly, right? Unless you're a monopoly, uh, you're in a competitive market and your co competition, your competitors, uh, if you raise raise price, your competitors will benefit because uh, they will draw 
uh, they will, you know, their price didn't rise, but your pri only your price was raised, then uh, customers will dump you. It will only drive the customers to your competitors, right? So you cannot raise price on your own. And suppose even if you're a, uh, even if you are a, a monopoly, if you raise price, you will lose customers, right? You, monopoly doesn't mean you will always have the customers, right? If customers find it too uh, burdensome, too onerous to pay such a price, outrageous price, then they won't, they won't use, they won't buy it anymore, right? It's like, you know, uh, or they will cut down on the usage, right? Usually utilities are, utilities are monopolies. You understand? Utilities are monopolies because it's called natural monopoly because utilities cannot, uh, so electricity, gas, they are util, uh, you know, basically you are served by only one uh, company, one utility provider in your area. There cannot be multiple suppliers because the, it, it, it takes huge investment in, for, in, in infrastructure, like you know, gas pipelines, you know, uh, 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 the uh, power cables and things like that, and those who own those power cables and you know uh, gas pipelines uh, in that geographic region, so th that's the one who first invested in the the in infrastructure, right? Uh, infrastructure cannot be criss uh, you know um, doubled or tripled, you know, cr crisscrossing the country. Why? Because, you know, eventually only one utility provider will be chosen by, only one utility provider will be picked by the customers, right? You cannot, um, your next door neighbor cannot have a different utility company because the pipeline coming into your neighborhood is the same pipeline by, provided by one company. Make sense? They cannot dig up your streets, you know, just to lay down another pipeline for from another company. That's that's just you know, uh, you know, chaotic, and um, you don't get the return on the. Uh, uh, I mean, for the uh, investment, right? For the investment that went into there, the return will be very uh, small or even negative because um, cable. Uh, utility cables, you know, cable TV, all these things are good examples of uh, natural monopoly. What about you know uh, MTA? MTA is a MTA is a monopoly, isn't it right? There can be no competitor to uh, MTA because uh, if there is another subway network, right across you know uh, New York, uh, five boroughs of New York. What's going to happen? They will have to dig up the ground everywhere. Every street will be dug up. And will there be enough space, underground space, to have, you know, double, you know, um, um, double subway networks? Huh? That's going to, then the whole city will crumble, right? There will be a big sinkhole, you know, <laughs> right? The whole, uh, because if you dig more and more underground, you know, uh, eventually, you know, um, uh, the you know uh, the ground cannot support the uh, uh, structure above it, the uh, the buildings and you know uh, everything. And besides, even if it is possible, people you are simply two companies are simply splitting up the same riders, same ridership, right? Then return your revenue will be halved, right? That, you know, uh, MTA is even now, even now, it's a monopoly, but MTA is uh, hiking the uh, uh, the fares every couple of years, right? And the service is no better. And this is a shame, you know, you don't, 
uh, 40 second, you know, um, uh, time, uh, 40 second, you know, uh, 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 what, uh, Times Square and um, uh, the uh, uh, Port Authority, 40, 42nd and uh, Port Authority. When it rains, it's been many years, you know, when it rains, right, I can't walk, you know, uh, in the... Uh, um, you know, there's an arcade, you know, arcade, you know, uh, underground, you know, before you, uh, uh, you know, before you actually, you know, um, uh, pass the turnstile. I mean, you have to, uh, uh, if you are at Port Authority bus terminal, you go down the stairs and then that's the subway station. But before you actually ride the subway, you know, there's a, uh, before you uh, swipe, the uh, metro car, uh, there's a, an underground arcade. And when it rains in the summer, this arcade, you know, uh, the rain is dripping from the ceiling. Well, the ceiling is basically what? The, the street above it, right? All those rain water, but the rain water is not clean because it's, it's, it, it sweeps the street, right? I mean, it's not the rainwater uh, from the cloud, but it's the rainwater, right? That sweep that swept the street, and you know, um, instead of going down the storm drain, they are seeping into, leaking into the, uh, 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 you know, underground arcade and subway station, and uh, it's so dirty when you know it's a dirty water, and you you feel very, yeah. <laughs> There's no way you can avoid it unless you uh, open an umbrella there. But this is, and even this summer, you know, uh, the subway stations were flooded. You know, I don't know where it was, you know, somewhere like in Washington Heights. Or I just saw it on the news. This is, this is a shame because you go to a country like South Korea. Of course, New York, uh, New York City subway has longer than 100-year history. Uh, subway system in South Korea is no long, uh, no older than, not older than uh, uh, 50 years. Uh, but they are state of the art, very clean, state of the art. Everything is, you know, you have, you know, um, uh, 5G network, Wi-Fi, free Wi-Fi in the subway, everywhere, anyway, everywhere in the, in, in um, every public place you have free Wi-Fi, 5G. Um, and the subway is really, you know, a uh, 21st century subway. New York City subway is like early 20th century. Uh, still, you know, um, everything is like early 20th century structure, infrastructure. So even now, I mean, with such a poor quality service, they still cry out that they are not making money. No, it's, uh, and they, uh, they they are saying you know uh, you know MTA union is crying out you know that uh, they have to lay off people and some stations must be you know unmanned station and etc cetera, et cetera, to, to, to cut down on cost that is rubbish why that is rubbish why because the MTA the the law the biggest shareholder of MTA is Wall Street. The biggest shareholder of MTA is Wall Street. So MTA's, MTA is very profitable, but is still because they want to squeeze out as much as they can, right? Wall Street, the biggest shareholder is, uh, of course, biggest shareholder can appoint the CEO, you know, biggest shareholder will someone who, who, who listens to them, who serves their best interest to CEO position. So CEO is not working for the uh, company. CEO is not working for the employees. CEO is working for the biggest shareholder, the majority shareholder. So even if they are making huge profit, they will still say, uh, you know, what is, how would you increase profit? 
huh? You have to minimize expenses to maximize profit. So they minimize expenses. Minimizing expenses means, you know, they cut down on the uh, manpower, labor, cut down on the labor. And for uh, infrastructure, they minimize the investment in infrastructure. In other words, the subway system needs to be constantly updated, upgraded, and, you know, uh, so nothing good is done, being done to the subways, you know. The trains are still old, you know. We don't have any Wi-Fi uh, in the subways, um, like in South Korea or in Japan. Uh, Japan is very disappointing, you know, in many ways. But um, uh, because they don't have the interest of the public in mind, they only have the interest of the Wall Street in mind. Right? So the subway station is still dirty, you know, it's dangerous, you know, um, uh, trains, you know, uh, have many problems, uh, but they still, you know, hike up the, uh, they just hike up the fare, they hike up the fare, and they still, cr still cry out that they are uh, suffering. Well, MTA employees may be suffering because um, they are not, you know, they don't get the pay raise or they are getting uh, downsized. Why? It's not because they are not profitable. Um, it's because the Wall Street, the biggest, the majority shareholder wants to squeeze out more. Anyway, that, that, that is, you know, I'm digressing uh, again. Uh, but the reason I'm talking about this is um, we have been looking at uh, return on investment uh, from macroeconomic perspective so far. Now we, it's time to uh, uh, look at the uh, uh, return from our microeconomic perspective in other words how does the company uh uh maxima uh, try to uh, uh maximize their return okay their return on investment of course the source of return on investment is profit okay so we will need to that's why we need to look into the uh, financial statement so uh, does everyone have this file opened in front of you everyone yes yes professor Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes, Professor. All right. Thank you for the uh, confirmation. So I'm. Uh, oh. Um, so um, when we say financial statements, there are actually four statements. That that means you know uh, we are referring to four statements. And what are those four statements? Uh, first of all, it's income statement, and then balance sheet, and then third one is cash flow, cash flow analysis or cash flow statement. And the fourth one is um, uh, the fourth one is retained earnings statement. Retained earnings. Now we're not gonna we'll be talking about only income statement and balance sheet in this class because um, it's gonna take a lot of time and we don't have that and cash flow actually cash flow statement is a like a, a meta analysis it's like a meta analysis of balance sheet and income statement so we don't uh, and that will be done in uh, 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 fmb 230 uh, corporate finance we'll look more into a cash flow statement in corporate finance uh, as you can see uh, i'm gonna quickly show you uh, there's a uh, a lot of the uh, uh, this playlist FMB 230. Uh, this is where you will find uh, all the financial statements. Okay, all the financial statements. So I've been telling you it is uh, cross-listed, right? Uh, these videos are cross-listed on YouTube, so you have to, um, uh, but it, it doesn't have any restriction. You can always, you know. Uh, so, um, 
give me, excuse me a second. Give me a second. All right, and um, so the two primary statements are income statement and balance sheet. And usually, normally, we need two balance sheets and one income statement. What that means is uh, balance sheet at time zero and balance sheet at time one. Okay, because balance sheet is a snapshot. It's more like a... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, what everything is like at time zero and uh, what everything is like at time one. And what happened between time one, time zero and time one is income statement. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so income statement uh, consists of largely two parts. Okay. Uh, largely two parts. Of course, that is, you know, uh, uh, the income part and the expenses part. Okay, income part and the expenses part. Now, in uh, it is it is very you know this picture is very uh, uh, brief um, this picture is a, uh, a simplified version simplified very simplified version uh, so in income income statement it it's making it very uh, simple but what you're seeing here is mostly you know sales revenue okay there are two sources of income if you uh, think about it. There are two sources. Two sources of income. Uh, of course, the main source of income is uh, revenue, sales revenue. Or I'm not gonna write spell out everything. That's that's just stupid. Uh, I'll just call it revenue. Well, the symbol, uh, the symbol is, you know, uh, I use TR for the symbol. And what does that mean? That means total revenue, total. And revenue is basically uh, um, uh, revenue is basically sales revenue. I mean, it's in uh, income from sale, right? So it's something you uh, receive for uh, selling something. And then second source of um, second source of income is investment income. Now think about it. Um, uh, the way the company, it's just like the way company, uh, uh, company's income flows, right? Income come, uh, the way the company's income is generated is pretty much like uh, how you generate your income. Why? First of all, um, if you, your income is mainly what? Your income is mainly labor income. Isn't that right? Earned income. It's called also earned income. Earned. Or well, labor income because um, you have to work first. You have to. And labor income is what? Uh, it's the income from selling your labor. You earn labor income by selling your labor. Isn't that right? 
Isn't that right? Yeah. Yes. Be it, be it, you know, be it, uh, you know, mental labor or physical labor, it doesn't matter. Right? My, I'm selling my labor. I mean, myself too. I'm selling my labor. And my labor is mainly, you know, uh, uh, mental labor. But I have to teach you, you know, by speaking. And speaking is also physical. Isn't that right? And I get very exhausted because every day I teach like, you know, um, uh, five hours in a row. I have another class before this, business to 10, uh, between 3 and 5.15. And of course, you know, 515, between 515 and uh, uh, 545, it's my office hour. Nobody has visited me <laughs> uh, yet. But of course, you have to uh, send me an email to uh, make, uh, schedule an appointment. Um, and if, you're, if your uh, uh, question, if your inquiry or question requires more time, if I have to address to address your question, if it takes more time than just 30 minutes, I will have to, uh, 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 we'll have to set up a separate, you know, appointment that can, you know, accommodate, you know, more time. Uh, that I, now, uh, so it's still, you know, uh, there's a labor part to my, you know, I, you know, physical labor, it's mental labor plus physical. Um, and then another, and then you earn salary, usually the paycheck, you know, uh, uh, with your paycheck, what do you do? Most of, you know, first of all, from your paycheck, you have to pay out expenses. And the expenses are, what are the expenses? Uh, major expenses for you for anybody right you have to pay uh, pay for the basic needs which are food shelter clothing isn't it right for anybody food shelter clothing is the main right basic needs isn't it right so pay the rent right uh, pay for food food shelter and pay for clothing right which would include also, you know, um, uh, maybe, you know, laundry too. I don't know. Um, but, you know, other, and then everything else is, you know, secondary expenses. I mean, compared to food, shelter, clothing, everything else is secondary. Isn't that right? Uh, you pay for education, right? You pay for your you know, education. You pay for your uh, commute, pay for transportation, right? Pay for telecommunication. These expenses, right, and expenses for entertainment, right? Uh, entertainment, maybe in a social life could be included in it, but whether it is transportation, communication, uh, education, entertainment, they are relatively secondary to, right, food, shelter, clothing, right? And then after that, whatever is left, I mean, if your annual income is, you know, $30,000, if your annual income is $30,000 and you pay for uh, food, shelter, clothing, uh, the basic needs, and then uh, education, telecommunication, transportation, and entertainment, right? Secondary expenses. And then whatever is left, what do you do? What do you do with whatever is left? Reinvest huh? it. Reinvest it. Someone said, yeah, good. Uh, who was that? Sophia. Sophia. Okay. You got 0 0.25. Well, reinvest is a good, it's a good word, right? Uh, a broader, in a broader concept, the broader word is savings, right? You put it in, you save it, right? But, you know, if you save, uh, of course, your money will be intermediated into uh, investing by the bank. Bank intermediates, right? They, they, they invest as an intermediary. 
And of course, you get only a fixed, fixed return, but the bank will get, bank runs the risk, they take the risk, and uh, they either uh, get 10% return or negative return, but they still owe you 0.1%. Or you can invest directly. You can invest directly, right? Into stocks and bonds. So think about it. And if you invest directly and you get, you know, uh, 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 return from it, that's investment income, right? You bought uh, with that savings, you know, uh, instead of putting it in, into a bank, you put it into uh, some stock and it gave you, you know, 10% return. Well, that's your investment income, right? So uh, these are two major sources of income. Now, let's think about the expenses. And investment income is not, uh, okay, here I listed sales revenue and investment income, okay? Um, it's not detailed, but you know, because it's only the uh, final numbers. And the, let's take a look at the expenses. Expenses also break down into two, two major components. Okay, uh, first, it's called the direct cost. <sighs> I take so much time to write it. Direct cost. And if there is direct cost, then there must be indirect. What do you think? Huh? Indirect cost. Indirect. indirect. Yeah, there must be indirect cost. So what are direct cost and indirect cost? Well, first of all, direct cost is also called the same thing. It goes by many different names. Direct cost is also called, you know, uh, uh, CGS. This is accounting's terminology, CGS. Cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold, right? CGS, cost of goods sold, which is also called? Total variable cost. Total variable cost. And total variable cost is the microeconomics terminology. Microeconomics. So depending on, you know, uh, um, an indirect cost is also called? Operating expense. Yes, operating expenses or OPEX, and OPEX is accounting's terminology, accounting's terminology. Uh, in microeconomics, it is called total fixed cost. Fixed cost. Fixed. Yeah. But it's not exactly the same thing. It's, it's roughly equivalent to Okay, so this this equal sign, this symbol, that's not equal, right? It's just roughly equivalent to, right? Um, and so what is cost of goods sold? And uh, what is total variable cost? Now, think about it. Um, and I talked about this before. Uh, var total variable cost is referring to uh, the cost that varies with the production level, right? With the production level. So think about it. Uh, largely, you know, um, what are the inputs of cost? What are the inputs? Uh, what are the inputs of production? And we talked about this before. We talked about this before. What are the inputs of production? Anybody? Equity capital? No, equity capital. What? Output, equity capital output, is not input. Sorry, it's no, it's not output either. Input means what? It is the material. Input means that is the uh, something that goes into production. The materials to make the product. Say that again. The materials to make the product. Yes, materials, but that's only one. Cost. That's only one. It can be labor as well. 
Oh, who said labor? Mohammed. Mohammed. Okay. Mohammed, you get zero point to five. Uh, Saf uh, who said material? Mariel. Mariel. Okay, Mariel, you get zero point two five for that. Mariel. Uh, material. So labor, material, and what else? Natural resources. What's that? Natural resources. Please Land enunciate. Equipment. You're very faint. Natural resources. Oh, natural resources. Well, natural resources is material. Isn't that right? I believe I talked about that yesterday. Natural resources. Capital. Plant Who equipment. said what? Capital. Who said? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Who said capital? Who said Ophelia. capital? Ophelia. Okay, Ophelia. So you you got 0 0.25 for that. Yes. There are three factors. It's also called factors of production, right? Three factors of production or three inputs to production. Capital, labor, and natural resource, right? Well, raw, raw material comes from natural resource, right? Um, these are these are inputs of production or factors of production, right? Every, and capital means, you know, uh, capital means uh, plant and equipment. Capital means physical capital here. In this context, capital means physical capital, right? Not the uh, uh, mo uh, financial capital. Uh, there are uh, two types of capital, money capital and a physical capital. Of course, source of everything is money capital, right? Why? There is no physical capital without money capital, right? With money capital, you can make physical capital, buy or make physical capital. Isn't that right? But without money capital, there is no physical, you know, uh, uh, there's no physical capital. Why to build physical capital, you need money. I mean, you need to buy, you know, steel plates. You need to buy, you know, bolts and nuts. You need to buy, you know, microchips. You need to buy, you know, a flat panel display. I mean, to build something, to build, you know, um, to build a robot or ro robot arm, right? In, in That's doing the welding uh, in a... Uh, 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 manufacturing plant, uh, you know, robot arms are doing the welding and, you know, things like that. So, you know, to build those robots, you need to buy, you know, like steel, right? Uh, it's, you know, uh, heavy equipment, you know, steel, made of steel, everything. And then, you know, uh, uh, microchips to control the movements of the robots and, you know, computer to uh, control, you know, regulate the movement, uh, all these things, you know. Money cap. There has to be money capital to you know. Um, but anyway, um, so plant and equipment, which is you know physical capital, and then we have to have labor to run it. Even if it's a fully automated plant, there's got to be someone to man the station, control station, right? Control panel. And if it is not fully uh, uh, mechanized or fully automated, still there is no human labor that is needed. Human labor needs, even in Amazon warehouse, right? <clears throat> there is this, you know, what do you call that? You know, um, there's a uh, something that looks like a tractor that moves the crates, right? There is something that, you know, pulls up the pallet or crate and, you know, uh, uh, move things around, you know. Some, somebody has to drive that, human labor. And, you know, there's also human labor in, at Amazon, you know, the conveyor belt. And Amazon, uh, by the way, is a very, very, very bad, <laughs> vicious <laughs> employer. Uh, because, you know, uh, they don't pay, uh, they pay very low minimum wage. And then uh, they sweatshop. Uh, in other words, they sweatshop their employees, you know. Um, and it's easy to, rep because think about it, if you don't have any um, specialized skills, 
if you don't have any high level skills and all you can provide is just a manual labor, the only jobs in the future for people with only manual labor, and only that, right? Sorting, you know, uh, uh, the merchandise, you know, and, you know, uh, but that's, that's why you need to have, you know, you need, you know, uh, that's why you need to have education. <laughs> you only have what else can there be? So anyway, so um, so CGS cost of goods sold is actually the cost of good cost sold. of what? Goods sold. Yeah, cost of goods sold is of course that literally says cost of goods sold, so you don't need to repeat that. But you know, it's if the you cost of the, the good soul and it varies by the output changes. Yeah, yeah. So what is it? Oh, we already talked about it. It's the cost of capital, labor, and raw material. Let's call that you know M material, natural or right? It's the cost of that. And I told you, well, it is called direct cost or total variable cost because it directly it directly varies right and i explained this so many times but every time i hear a lot of background noise if you uh if your microphone is on please you know uh mute it i say this so many times but you know still some uh when it's you know at exams, some students, you know, still give me such an, you know, outlandish, you know, explanation. Variable. What does variable mean? Huh? That it can what change. does it mean? Huh? Yeah, change. they change. Right? They change with what? They change with production level. Production level. Right? Output level. So think about it. Uh, let's say you run a coffee shop, right? For coffee shop, what would be the uh, uh, direct cost? For coffee shop, the direct cost is cost of the uh, uh, the coffee machine, right? Which is your uh, equipment, right? Uh, it's not the. So I'm, I'm not talking about the full cost. I'm not talking about the full cost. Uh, how much, how much of it is used, you know, uh, to produce one cup of coffee? How much labor goes into it? How much material goes into it for one cup of coffee? So, uh, for one material-wise, one cup of coffee would, um, let's say, you know, coffee bean, some coffee bean, right? How would you count it by ounce, by grams? Maybe, you know, uh, let's say, you know, uh, uh, one ounce of coffee bean is needed to make one cup of coffee. I don't know, maybe, you know, uh, in grams, maybe, you know, uh, uh, 50 grams, 50 grams of, you know, coffee bean is needed. And then that's not only it, there's water. And there's also um, sweetener sugar or sweetener and a cup uh, if you use you know <laughs> disposable disposable you know uh, carry out cup right disposable paper cup right uh, of course if it is you know uh, if you use you know uh, a mug uh, and which can be uh, uh, reused you know you just have to wash and reuse you know but let's say yeah, well, we know uh, what would be the cost of material for one cup and how much labor is being, uh, how much labor cost. I mean, if one hour, you pay, you have to pay, um, I don't know, if you pay by the hour or, you know, if you pay by the hour, let's say, um, uh, uh, you have to, uh, let's say, how many cups uh, on on average on average day? How many cups uh, per hour are sold? Or on average day, how many cups are sold uh, 
uh, a day, right? How many cof cups of coffee are sold a day? And you can, you know, divide it by, and if you have, if you pay uh, the labor, uh, your employee, you have your, let's say, employee, uh, and your employee, the, you know, uh, the barista, right? The barista, right? Uh, it, or you can be your own, you know, you are, you may be, you know, the owner and the barista as well, but let's say you hire a barista and then um, uh, per day you're paying him, uh, let's say, uh, $100 per day. And maybe it could be more, you know. Uh, then, you know, uh, you can divide it by number of cups sold on average per day. And you know you can calculate labor cost, capital. Um, I mean, this coffee machine, coffee maker, is uh, five thousand dollars, right? And then how you know uh, you divide it by you know um, I mean, uh, how much will it take to recover this cost? I mean, you know, uh, uh, let's say you, you know you recover the cost over five years, then you know you can divide you know five thousand by you know, five, Five years, you know, uh, times 365. Uh, I mean, uh, and then divide that by number of cup, average number of cups sold per day, and you can, you know, uh, in other words, for every factor of production, you can calculate the uh, per unit cost of them. So let's say, so per unit. sum of all of these per unit is let's say one dollar right so and of course you will have to sell coffee at a the price of coffee would be higher than that of course you you should sell coffee for uh, two dollars or something you know uh, otherwise you know uh, uh, but that's you know uh, direct cost per unit and this is also called uh, and then, what is this called? What is this called? Isn't this product production cost per unit? Yes, Professor. Yes, yes. Right? Important point is, is per unit. Right? So this is the uh, per unit production cost, production cost per unit. But also another, if you think about it, another name for that is, um, uh, uh, but, but, you know, before we get there. So think about it. Your direct cost v varies or it changes with the output level or production level. So if you produce, you know, uh, 1,000 cup of coffee, right? In other words, you sold 1,000 cup of coffee uh, per day. Maybe that's too, that's too many, maybe. Maybe, you, but you know, just, just for our thought experiment. So if you sold 1,000 cups of coffee per day, right? Your CGS, cost of goods sold, is clearly what? If you sold 1,000 cups of coffee per day, that's your, you know. 2,000. Why is it 2,000? Isn't the cup of coffee $2? No, I, I didn't ask. I didn't ask how much is your revenue. I asked how it's a dollar. Per unit production cost is dollar. What, what should be your CGS? Um, 1,000. 1,000. It's just 1,000. Isn't that right? Because yeah. it's simply what? Cost per unit, unit times unit. Times what? Right? Cost per unit times quantity sold. Isn't it right? Yes. Yeah. Cost per unit, production cost per unit times quantity sold. Isn't it right? That is what's called total var variable cost. Because it, so if you didn't sell 1,000, but if you sold 2,000 units per day, what's your cost of goods sold? 2,000 units. You sold 2, Two thousand dollars, yes. But if you sold only five hundred, you sold only five hundred cups of coffee. What's your CG? Five hundred dollars, yes. So this is it varies, it changes with your production level. Make sense? 
Hence, it is called variable cost. It is to called total variable cost because you multiply, in other words, that uh, production cost per unit by the quantity sold. So another name for production cost per unit is AVG. What do you think that AVG stands for? What do you think it means? There is an average. 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 Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, AVC. AVC. Average variable cost. Average variable cost. Yes. Why? Think about it. You divide when you sold one thousand. The CGS is one thousand. You divide it by one thousand units. What do you get? One dollar. <coughs> you sold two thousand units. So then you know uh, your CGS is two thousand dollars. CGS is two thousand dollars. And you divide it by two thousand units. You still get one dollar. In other words. What did you just do? You di you divided the total, isn't that total, right? You you know, uh, if you multiply this by the uh, unit sold or the quantity, right? Yeah. Yeah. Quantity sold, right? Then mm -hmm. that's what? That's total, right? Total variable cost. And when you divide total by quantity, what is that? When you divide total by quantity, what is that? Your AVC. No, no, no. When you divide in general, what I'm asking is when you divide the total. Total is sum, right? When you divide the sum by the quantity. Quantity is what? Number of units. Yeah, the that's called average. Exactly. Average. When, you, when you divide total by quantity, that's average. That's why it's only natural to call it average variable cost. So here, we can rewrite total variable cost as average variable cost times quantity sold. Actually, oh, it's actually quantity produced here. It should be quantity produced, not quantity sold, because uh, think about it. Not everything you produced don't get sold, right? You understand? You produced, for example, uh, in a coffee shop, you make coffee when there is an order, but usually that's not the case. I mean, uh, most manufacturing, right? Does the car maker pro the, does the car maker make produce cars only upon order, only when they receive order? No. 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 They pre-produce the cars. They pre-produce the cars based on the Zero demand forecast. the demand yeah yeah based on the demand forecast right based on the demand forecast if they are making cars if they are making cars you know only upon order it's like you know tailor shop isn't that right yeah huh? a tailor shop cannot be a big business because to, to make it a big business, you have to uh, uh, mass produce. And if you mass produce, you know, um, uh, you cannot wait for the order. You'll have to uh, mass produce based on the uh, demand forecast, right? Yeah. So this is the um, That's why you may not sell everything you produced, right? So CGS cost of the sold or total variable cost is average cost times quantity produced or quantity built, right? Quantity produced, quantity built. On the other hand, we can define revenue as, what is revenue? Hmm? What is revenue? I know it's you're going to say... Uh, yeah, yeah, but you know that's formal de definition. Income, I already said uh, that's the only income. I mean, income breaks down into uh, revenue and investment income. So if you were to define uh, revenue verbally, that is the income generated from sale, isn't that right? But I don't want verbal definition. 
because verbal definition is always, you know, uh, blurry, right? It doesn't get neatly defined. So always the, the, the best thing is uh, mathematical definition. Q. Huh? P times Q, price times the quantity so. Yeah, 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 price times quantity. And this time it's price times quantity sold. This is quant quantity sold, right? This is the quantity sold. And this is the quantity built. Right? Think about it. Uh, just to make it simple, uh, suppose you are um, in this coffee shop, right? Uh, of course, in, in a coffee shop would have, you know, uh, there's, you know, different sizes, you know, venti, you know, uh, grande, or, you know, <laughs> stupid, you know. <laughs> I mean, grande is not really grande. You understand, right? You go to uh, yeah. anybody who has been to uh, Starbucks knows grande is not really grande. I mean, if it is really grande, it should be big, don't you think? Huh? Yeah. So the word grande is already venti. I mean, uh, flaunted. You know, I mean, uh, blown up, blown up, right? Blown up. The word grande is already blown up. Don't you think? And venti means, I believe, it means you know, blown up. <laughs> because uh, 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 venti, I think it is Italian for uh, uh, you know, uh, wind. Because I know. I, I don't know Italian that I don't know Italian, but, but I know French, and in French, in French, you know, uh, vent, le vent, that means wind. So Italian vent, vent, and also in English, ventilation. Why is it ventilation? You open the window, the wind comes in, so it's ventilation, right? So venti must be, you know, uh, uh, like you know, uh, past participle of the word vent, you know, so. Uh, blown up, like, you know, by wind. So the word grande itself is already blown up, right? Uh, exaggerated. And there, there, you know, you have, you know, uh, latte and all these. But forget about it. Let's say there is only one variety in your coffee shop. You sell only Americano. You sell only Americano. Even Americano is, you know, uh, in Italian, it's called uh, longo. Longo means, you know, uh, that means long. What does that, why is it called long? <laughs> that means elongated. Because in French, you know, uh, uh, Americano is called, you know, uh, café allonge. Allonge means, you know, elongated. Why is it called elongated? You added water, right? Coffee is basically to Europeans, coffee is... Um, <laughs> Suddenly the word escapes me. Uh, espresso. Espresso is to Europeans. Coffee means cafe means espresso. Espresso is basically you know uh, uh, extracted. You know, so it's you know extraction. You know, extract. A very thick. Very thick uh, uh, extract of coffee bean. That, that, that's what what is meant by you know that's what the what you call coffee. But then when they when they saw Americans drinking coffee, to them it looks like it is you know it's water. It's, it's a lot. Of it. So it's elongated. It's water. That's why you know cafe uh, allonge in French and you know longo in Italian. So. Uh, I digress a lot, but you know, uh, uh, the point is, let's just to simplify our thought experiment, let's assume you have only one, one type of coffee, Americano. Okay, okay um, would, would someone please mute the microphone? I hear this background noise and there is a bird chirping. I... I like to hear a bird chirping in the morning, but you know, if it is, um, 
I like to wake up, you know, uh, uh, I like to wake up, you know, uh, with the birds singing, you know, uh, not by the alarm, but by the, <laughs> by the bird, you know, singing. And, you know, when I wake up, I would like to see water in front of me. Not, not necessarily, uh, I don't like sea, I don't like to see the sea, but, you know, river. <laughs> I'm like, uh, you might want, oh, you know, you want the uh, Manhattan view. Well, Manhattan view is not that bad, you know. From West New York, you would get the best Manhattan view. Not from the, uh, not from Queens, you know. Uh, from, you know, uh, West New York, New Jersey, you get the best, you know, uh, uh, city skyline, you know. Uh, but I prefer something like upper, you know, uh, upper hustle, you know, uh, more uh, uh, birds singing, you know, in the morning. I wake up and wake up, I see, you know, like cliffs, you know, like palisades on New Jersey side or, you know, um, otherwise, you know, like beacon in New York. Uh, but, you know, uh, the reality is I, I don't have any birds around me. <laughs> well, I, I, no, uh, um, so assuming that you have only a, a Americano, so think about it. Then your Americano is two dollars. Same size, always, just same size, right? Uh, so then, if if you sold, you know, 1,000 cups of coffee, right? And, you know, your uh, uh, coffee is $2. So what is your revenue then? Mm -hmm. You sold 1,000 cups of coffee. What's, what's your revenue? 1,000. Huh? Well, if each, if each cup's still a dollar. Two dollars. Yeah, I said that already. That was already a uh, given. Oh, two thousand. Two thousand dollars. Yes. So who was that? Sophia. Sophia. And this is not a very difficult uh, question. You got two point five for that. But you know, people, please. You know, there was someone who, when I asked about the uh, 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 total variable cost or cost of goods sold. Uh, someone gave me 2000 went ahead and look, I didn't ask about revenue. I asked about total variable cost and that, that person gave 2000 And when the question was really about revenue, nobody said anything. Nobody said, right? Only Safia gave me, but that's not that difficult. It's $2 times 1000 So, you know, 2000 is, you know, it's really not a challenging question. Yeah, and you might wonder, yeah, that's that's because that's a simplified version. But think about it. Even if you have even if you have, you know, let's say three three varieties, three products, three, you know, uh you have uh Americano, you have cappuccino, you have, you know, uh uh what latte. Three products, uh, all, you know, let's say the sizes are all the same. I mean, if we uh, give it, you know, size variation, then it's going to be more complicated. And Americano is $2, let's say cappuccino and latte are $3. And you sold 1,000 Americano, 1,000 cappuccino, 1,000 latte. What's going to be your revenue? Can anybody give, tell me? Hmm? Again, you sold 1,000, 1,000, 1,000 each, right? Americano is still $2. Cappuccino and uh, latte are $3. So is this too difficult? Is it challenging? Who can give me the answer? Would it be 8,000? Huh? 8,000? 8,000? Yeah, it's eight thousand. Yes, I mean it's it's not it's not the number that's important. And who who gave me eight thousand? Gabriel. Gabriel. Okay, this is a you know this is elementary school you know this is third grade uh, second grade uh, third grade you know question. <laughs> so it's not you got two point five, but you know this is not challenging. But what's in, what's more important is the logic. 
It's not the number. We call that, you know, let's call it P1, uh, the uh, Americano is product one, product number one. What do you do? P times, P1 times Q1, right? P2, let's call, let's call uh, cappuccino product two. So P2, price of two, product two, times Q2, right? And then let's call latte product number three. So then it's going to be P3, price of product three, times Q3. Okay, so eventually it's the same thing. It's basically, you know, price times quantity sold, right? Price times quantity sold. And you know better, you know, how to simplify this. We use, you know, summation sign and then P I times Q I. Okay, where I runs from one to three in this case, but you know, to generalize to n, because there can be n number of products. Make sense? Well, the point is total revenue is price times quantities sold, and CGS, cost of goods sold, or total variable cost is average variable cost, which is production cost per unit times quantity built, okay? Now, that explains, you know, uh, investment income will have to be explained later, but we'll just take it as given for now. Now, indirect cost, uh, and let's say it's operating, uh, uh, let's think about it. And I told you it's also called, you know, uh, uh, OPEX, operating expense. What are the operating expenses? Operating expenses, or uh, the cost that doesn't change or vary with the production level, right? It doesn't change directly with the production level. So what does that mean? No matter where the production level is, whether you produce 1,000 units, 3,000 units, or 500 units, this cost doesn't change, okay? so. It doesn't depend on, it doesn't depend on production level. Hence it is called fixed cost. It's fixed regardless of the production level. Okay. Uh, but it can, it can also change, but not with the production level, not with the production level. Production level is not the uh, 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 cause of the change in this. It's, you know, uh, other, for other reasons it can change, but basically it's given. Uh, hence, it's called indirect cost uh, because it's not directly going into the production. Okay. But what are the examples of this uh, fixed cost operating? Rent. First of all, rent. Yes. Think about it. Uh, and who said that? Harrington. Said, huh? Sophia. Sophia? Yes. Okay, Seth, are you, and there was someone else? Was there someone else? Okay, Safia, you got 0 0.25. You got inheritance. Inheritance. Huh? inheritance. Inheritance. What is that? Inheritance? What did you say? Can you enunciate it, please? Yes, Professor, I'm sorry, I have background noise. <laughs> What do you mean? Inheritance? Did you say inherit? But in, think about it. If you said inheritance, inheritance is not a cost. It has nothing to do with cost. I mean, you uh, you inherited something from... <laughs> it is your asset. If you inherited something, it is your asset. You, you inherited, you know, uh, uh, $1 million from a... Uh, from an uh, uh, a remote uncle that you never knew, but who passed away recently, or from your grandparents, but that's your asset. It's not, and assets don't have anything to do with the cost. I mean, um, 
The other side of the cost is the, the income, not asset, okay? Asset is something that can generate uh, income, but so uh, let's not digress you know, any further. Rent is a very good example. Why? Because rent doesn't change no matter how much you make. Exactly. Or not based on how much you make. Your landlord, you know, suppose your business is very slow because of, you know, uh, uh, pandemic, you know, uh, now uh, pandemic is not a good, good excuse because, you know, actually businesses are booming, you know, during the pandemic. I told you because of the uh, uh, stimulus, uh, fiscal stimulus, you know, from, uh, you know, and also monetary, expansionary monetary policy and fiscal stimulus. Uh, so, um, but. Let's say at, at the beginning, at the onset of the pandemic, you know, there was a slight recession because, you know, uh, of depressed economic activities. Obviously, people in the uh, hospitality industry, I mean, like, you know, uh, 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 restaurants working in, you know, uh, like a waiter, server in the restaurant, you know, people don't come into dine, so... You, know, you lose jobs, you know, um, uh, spending goes down. So, but then, so let's say people don't come to the uh, uh, coffee shop. So you had a very bad month. So you're normally you sell two thousand cups of coffee. Your revenue is like you know, uh, you know, two thousand uh, uh, dollars oh, uh, per month. That's too too small, right? Per day maybe. So let's say uh, per month you uh, you sell twenty thousand cups of coffee. So your revenue would be like twenty thousand dollars per month uh, normally. But this month, this particular month, you sold only one thousand, uh, two thousand cups of coffee. So your rev uh, monthly income, monthly revenue, dropped to uh, four thousand dollars, right? Um, and then. So you, you you know uh, you can barely pay rent. So you make you plead to your landlord, please. You know we've been having you know this is a very bad month. My business has been, and your rent is you know let's say five thousand dollars a month. Please, can you please give me a break? You know uh, uh, and lower the rent for this month. Will this work? Huh? No. This will never work. And. Suppose you had a very good month, you know, you're, you sold, you know, uh, 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 double the, uh, uh, you sold double the uh, uh, normal level of, so you're, you're now, uh, your revenue is $40,000 this month, you know, very good month. Just because your revenue is higher, does the landlord charge you a higher rent? No, it's not like that, right? Also, the interest expense, just because um, your business is, you know, dwindling or your business is thriving, does that mean the interest you pay on your borrowing, on your debt, does that change? No, they don't change. They are fixed, right? And that's, those are the examples of fixed costs. Another thing. Now, what about the... Um, uh, but this is a coffee shop example, so you can't think of second. But let's think about a uh, big manufacturing, like computer manufacturing, computer manufacturing, or uh, auto manufacturing, you know, car, right? In a, in auto manufacturing, right, there are two types of two types of employees, two types of workers, right? In manufacturing, think about it. In manufacturing, there are two types of workers, isn't that right? Yes. There are workers that are directly involved in production activities, right? Or workers that are directly involved in production, right? Working on, uh, you know, assembly line, right? Imagine auto industry. There are workers that are working in the assembly line, right? These are production workers. And what's the other... What's the other half? 
I mean, uh, employees not directly a part of the production. Huh? Employees not um directly in part of the production. Yeah, employees that are not directly involved in production, and those are generally clerical staff, clerical, right? Doing the clerical work. Right. Of course, there are marketing marketing staff. There are, there are people in the uh, 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 legal you know team. There are people in the uh, 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 you know R and D. There are people, um, uh, but you know marketing team. You know whether uh, they are not directly involved in production. And as a good example, secretaries. Secretaries are. A typical example of clerical, clerical staff, right? Secretaries. So think about it. When production is doubled, right? When auto production is doubled, of course, uh, auto production being doubled. Uh, when production level doubles, that means you know demand doubled. Tesla. Think about it. There are people. There are workers working on the in the assembly line. Tesla demand for Tesla double, you know. I mean, now maybe you know it's not only because of the U.S., but you know, a lot of other countries in European countries, especially in Norway, many other countries are following suit. They ban, and some other countries, you know, in city centers, you know, like in Oslo, um, city centers, they ban all the uh, 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 internal combustion. Engine, in, in other words, gasoline cars. They ban gasoline cars, so only electric vehicles are allowed. And this is a global trend. So obviously, demand. Uh, if you're uh, thinking about global demand, Tesla's you know production can double. And when when production level doubles, what is also doubled? When production level is doubled, what is also doubled? Anyone can answer that? When production level is doubled, what is also doubled? What doubles when production level doubles? We've been talking about this and nobody can nobody can cost even think about it. The cost of the items? Cost of what? The materials and productions that's needed. Why can't yeah you're right but why can't you say capital labor and material? Capital I labor. Told, material. I told, <laughs> yeah, I told you you know these are the factors of production. Capital labor and material will have to double. Isn't that right? Which means total variable cost will also double. So uh, who said that? Who was that? Gabriel. A bull. A bull. A bull, okay. A bull. A bull, you get 0 0.25. Yeah. Um, don't don't look for the words in the, uh, you know, nebulous. <laughs> don't look for the words in nebulous universe, right? In a cloudy, you know, a fudgy. I told you, microeconomics defined it very neatly. Right? If you think about it, everything can be summarized as capital, labor, and material. Isn't that right? Factors of production, capital, everything is, can be summarized as, right? It can be represented by capital, labor, and material. So think about it. Um, you have to double the labor, double the usage of capital, double the material. I mean, capital uh, can uh, usage of capital. It can be double uh, in two ways. Um, to double the production, you may have to double the uh, production capacity. But the doubling the production capacity cannot come overnight. You have to uh, you have to expand your uh, pro uh, production capacity. So that means uh, expanding the uh, uh, your facility, production facility, which means plant and equipment, right? Think about it. If your plant is running at full capacity now, currently, if your plant is running at full capacity, 
You understand? If you uh, on, and most likely most companies are running, most plants are running at about you know uh, 80 to 85 percent capacity. There must be some slack, right? Uh, there must be some excess capacity. Because when suddenly demand increases by 5%, 10%, uh, you can handle that. When you're normally running at 85% capacity, 5% or 10% increase in demand can be handled with the uh, current uh, facility. Does that make sense? But when the demand increases by 200%, 100%, with the current plant and current equipment, you can't handle that because you're already maxed out. So what do you do, have to do? You have to build another plant. You have to build another plant of the same capacity. Then 200% can be accommodated, right? Or even bigger a uh, plant, slightly 10% more than that. Uh, then there will be excess capacity. So. Uh, uh, I told you, if someone dropped something uh, in the chat box, I can't see unless, you know. Uh, no, I had a question. OK, hold on. Yeah, let me let me uh, just hold on to that thought. Um, uh, no, machines, machines and buildings, they are not they are not a uh, fixed cost. Machines and buildings are your uh, first of all, I told you, machine is, you know, uh, equipment. Uh, machine is your uh, hard asset, your, your fixed asset. Uh, and uh, the cost of machine is uh, spread, over, uh, spread over the life expectancy of that equipment. And it is, you know, depreciated uh, uh, little by little. Uh, by the unit, unit cost of the machine. I mean, uh, the unit cost of production. Um, and building is also your uh, fixed asset. It's not cost, okay? Cost for, um, cost for, yes, uh, cost for constructing that building uh, is part of, yes, but not the building per se, but the cost of uh, constructing, the construction cost of the building is fixed cost, right? Um, so where was I? Um, so capital, once again, uh, if production is double, then you may have to expand, you will have to expand your uh, capacity. So you'll have to build another plant, right? Uh, but if it is just like 10% increase or 5% increase, uh, maybe you have excess capacity. But if you're already running at full capacity, there is no other answer. Uh, but, you know, building another plant of the same capacity, then you can accommodate 200% uh, uh, of the demand, right? 100% increase in demand. What about labor? Uh, labor, think about it. There are two ways. You can you can double you can double the labor force, right? Or you can double their hours. Of course, these are two extreme examples. Uh, most of the times, is somewhere in between, because if you have one thousand workers or one hundred, let's just make it one hundred workers, one hundred production uh, assembly line workers, and when um, uh, demand doubles, right? Uh, easiest solution could be doubling their time. They're working eight hours a day now. If you <laughs> forced, if you make them work sixteen hours a day, of course, not. This is not possible because that's against the uh, uh, labor law, and the union will be against it. But you know, at of course, if you work double time, then your income, your your income will double. There will be some volunteers who will work double time, right? And over even for overtime, you have to pay overtime wages. So, uh, but if they can work double, you know, uh, time, uh, paying double wages, 
or uh, you can double the number of workers. So hire another hundred uh, assembly line workers. But then uh, this is not preferred by most manufacturers. Why? Working in the uh, car industry, right, and assembly line, these are union unionized jobs. You know, protect. They are protected by union. You understand why? Not only because uh, they want to secure their jobs, but this is skilled skilled labor. You don't become, you know, uh, uh, assembly line workers just just today. You know, just one day. You have to have experience. I mean, and unskilled worker on an assembly line could cause a disaster. Why? Because it can cause, you know, uh, uh, it's yeah, almost like a sabotage. Yeah, they can injure themselves. Not only that, they, they can make defective product and the entire assembly line can slow down because of this one newbie, inexperienced newbie. You understand? And if it is a, a complex machine like a car, a defect can cause a death car accident and death and you don't want the company doesn't want to face these lawsuits right <clears throat> so they are very selective about but anyway uh, if there's a supply of experienced workers yes you can double the labor force but so everything doubles you know that's why that's why it is called variable cost because it varies with the production level. But what about the number of secretaries? Think about it. When, when the production doubles, do you need to double the secretaries? Do you need to double the number of secretaries? Or do you need to double their hours? Huh? No, not necessarily. Yes. Yeah. Who said yes? Answer is no. How can why do you double the secretaries? I mean, the secretaries are not double directly hours. double their hours. No, they are not. First of all, to doubling. Why do you have to double their hours? I mean, that only pertains to the production workers because production workers have to double their hours, or the number of production workers have to double because production level has doubled. The secretaries are not working in the assembly line. They are not directly involved in production. Oh, my bad. I thought you meant supervisors. I, I talked, I said secretaries, not supervisors. And the supervisors that are supervising the production workers, yeah, they need to double their hours or you know, double the number of supervisors. Or it may not be necessary. Actually, a uh, number of supervisors don't have to be doubled because usually, uh, think about it, um, with the same number of supervisors, <clears throat> and also the thing is, uh, this time they have to double the production uh, because, you know, the, the, the demand has doubled. But in the future, after this, uh, after this year, next year, demand may revert back to normal level. And at that time, when you have, uh, and I told you the reason the companies prefer to uh, double the hours rather than doubling the number of workers is because of that. Because when the uh, 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 demand returns to the normal level, you, you don't need 200, 200 workers. You need only 100 workers. You can't, you know, uh, retain 200 workers because it's there will be a job for only 100 workers and retaining 200 workers then inevitably will have to uh, half the, uh, the, the amount of work that goes to each worker. And you don't want to pay the same wage for half the work to each, you know, uh, individual. You understand? And if laying off is easy, right? If laying off is easy. Uh, one year later, when the uh, demand returns to the normal level, 
you'll have to lay off these 100 workers. And if laying off is easy, uh, it's not a problem, right? But then think about it. I told you, um, uh, auto industry, I mean, assembly line workers, this is a union union job. It's a unionized job. And once they are uh, in union, un and these additional 100 workers are also union members, then <laughs> you have no, there's no way you can lay them off. So from the uh, uh, company's perspective, management's perspective, uh, doubling their hours is the answer. Uh, and the supervisors may, you know, simply the uh, same number of supervisors and uh, just, you know, uh, overwork, you know, doubling their hours. Uh, secretaries, no, secretaries, clerical staff don't have to be doubled, right? Their numbers don't have to be doubled. Their hours don't have to be doubled because so uh, that is also an example of operating expense or fixed cost. Okay, and fixed cost is, uh, and I told you, operating expenses and fixed cost are not exactly the same thing because uh, in microeconomics, fixed cost is mostly coming from initial investment. Initial investment. Which is also called sunk cost initial investment or sunk cost, okay? So uh, we are out of time, so we can't, uh, we will have to continue this uh, uh, tomorrow, but think about it. So we have listed all the, uh, we have listed all the uh, uh, sources of income. There are two sources of income, revenue and investment income, and we have listed all the uh, sources of cost, direct cost and indirect cost. Then what do you do? When you have all the income listed and all the, uh, 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 of course, you know, uh, we will only have the sum of these numbers, you know, total of the, uh, not, you know, in, individually. I mean, um, so when we have all of them, uh, what do you do? Hmm? What is naturally the next course of action? When you have income, when you have income all accounted for, when you have all uh, expenses all accounted for, what's the next course of action? Try to find a profit. Okay, someone said what? So find, find the profit. What, 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 what is the, what is, the, you said so before profit, what? Save. What? The profit, Save? The profit. Please enunciate. I can only hear the uh, last part, but the first part. Profit, professor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, uh, what do you do to, to invest find the profit? The huh? To invest the profit. No, 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 no. You're missing the verb. How do you get to profit? What do you need to do to get to the profit? Find, find the sum of everything. Your profit and the sum of income. To get the profit is the final result after paying out the lender's capital. So uh, you would subtract the amount that you earn minus the lender's capital, so the, amount pe the people you have to pay back. Okay, uh, lender's capital lender's capital below, uh, is all included here. Indirect operating, operating expenses, right? Operating expenses not only include, you know, uh, there's interest, right? It's not only rent. Right? It's not only, you know, uh, look at the uh, breakdown of the uh, rent, utility, right? Salaries that go to, uh, you know, uh, there is a fixed part, fixed portion of the salary, right? Because um, uh, why would the lender be part of the normal, the producing at normal? Of, uh, no, 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 look, 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 I, I'm speaking, and uh, if you are speaking at the same time, your voice is just, you know, uh, our voices are overlapping. No, you know, we can't, nobody can hear what I say clearly and nobody can hear what you say. I cannot hear you clearly because your, your voice is, you know, conflicting with mine. So here, um, uh, it's not shown here, but you know, um, 
salaries depreciate you know, or the expense. Uh, uh, interest, interest payment to the uh, lenders is it's also part of that. Okay. Uh, but the question was, what do you need to do? I mean, we have everything, we have everything, uh, we have everything listed, right? So um, we can, we can, you know, basically add this up, right? That's sum. When I say sum, it's not S-O-M-E. I'm talking about S-U-M, sum. We have the sum of this. We have the sum of this. Then what do you do? When you have income and when you have expenses, what do you do? What is the natural course of action? To pay for all the expenses first. Pay for all the expenses. Yeah, that that's that's here. It's listed. This is you know this these are the expenses. So you that means you know you are paying them. You're paying them. So that they comes out of where number. you're paying them. That comes out of where. Oh, oh someone said what? Initial investment. No, 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 no. You, someone just, someone just said something. I, you didn't say some. You, who said? Whoever said initial investment? You didn't say. You didn't say that before. I mean, I'm asking someone who said something before you. Someone said what? Ah, oh, this is. You said the right thing. Why can't you say that with a bold attitude? If I didn't miss here, you said the right thing. What's the normal? What's the, no. My question is, what is the uh, natural course of action? When you have these numbers, I mean, you have the sum of these numbers, you have the sum of these numbers, right? Then what is the natural course of action? You take the difference. Okay. Yes, who said that? Who said that? Oh, boo, but I feel like that's the same thing we've all been saying. You're taking the profit and loss, right? No, no. Well, you have your I mean, income, you, know, you have your expenses. Let, let's, be, look, look, let's, be, let's be very clear. Take, take the profit. But you know, you said take the profit. Eventually, you can connect it with that. You can connect it with that, right? Take the profit. You can connect it with that. But nobody knows what exactly is being done to take profit. Nobody's, in other words, what did I say? Economics and finance is all about that, you know, step-by-step uh, -step chain reaction. Okay, I mean, in a vague way, in a very vague way, you can you can say, oh yeah, take profit is the same thing as taking the difference between the two. In a vague way only. But my question was, what is the natural course of action? Course of that means action is what? It's a verb, right? Action is a noun by itself, but you know, when I'm asking about the action, I'm asking for the verb. And what is the verb that is coming in? What is the verb that has to be executed before arriving at profit? To arrive at profit, what is the verb that must be executed? Is subtract, minus. Do you understand? And you need to think like that instead of vaguely, vaguely saying, take profit. Okay, next step is profit, but it's not called profit just yet. It's called, you know, operating income, right? Um, but look, think about it. You have to subtract expenses from income okay you have to subtract expenses from income and that word is that verb is subtract okay and that is something you probably you never thought about that but you know on you know without 
being conscious, you you have to subtract. That's you know what else is there, and that is something in etched in all our DNA. When you have expenses, when you have income, your DNA tells you without you know thinking too much. Your DNA tells you to subtract, right? Expenses from income. And the result is called operating income, but another name for that is EBIT. So um, you subtract operating expenses and CGS, I mean the sum of these two, from net revenue or net, net revenue, that's net revenue, it's not net income, net income is a different thing. Uh, so it's called operating income. And I heard because, you know, I heard someone says subtract. Along the way, someone said, I heard, I heard faintly subtract. But someone who always, someone who gives the right answers always, you know, doesn't come back. When I ask, who said it before this, before you, who said it before, before this, who said it? Maybe I misheard, but that person, if you if you gave that answer, then why can't you just you know repeat it? That makes that will make my life a lot easier. <laughs> Everybody else's life a lot easier. Uh, why? Because you are not confident. But what you know? What harm is there if you are not even if you are not confident, right? It doesn't hurt you. So it's called operating income or EBIT, okay? And what does EBIT mean? It stands for earnings before interest and tax. So uh, we're out of time, so I'll have to stop here. And uh, I'll stop.